Hey guys, what is up? The Hill Twins are here. Back at it again with another, another video. video. That's right. And today we are actually bringing you guys a coaching session. We've been getting a lot of comments from you guys um, and a lot of support actually for our videos. Um, and I know most recently one of the comments asked to do a Frieza versus Varys. So we, I've actually had the luxury of playing a Varys online and um, we're gonna go and review that that uh, 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 video. And Eon's gonna also go in and talk about some of the many um, things of gameplay right, that, that we've deployed involved, to right. go against uh, oh, Varys. And right. every match is particularly different, but you kind of get a good idea of what's, of going, what's on. going on and what you should be doing uh, for our Freezer players. So without further ado, yeah, I'll yeah. let Eon talk while I set things, up. set things up. All right, so before we get into the video, the first thing you have to identify is the fact that you're playing against Varys. Why is that important? Well, there are certain rules of engagement when engaging in a match with Varys. Looking at Varys, Varys is a 20k attacker on his turn uh, with critical. However, one of the most important things to take away from that is that Varys is stagnated, meaning that he cannot draw cards. And Red doesn't have very good card draw slash card search. Therefore, our goal is to wane our opponent out of their resources and force them to attempt to awaken themselves, right? So they are drowning. Now, lots of times when you're playing against um, Beerus, you are worried because of the critical. Right. The prime objective of Frieza is to self-awaken regardless, so we're not really worried about the crit because we have the best card draw, card search, etc. We can regain our hand back with cards like Ginyu, with cards like Sorbet, etc. So before we know it, we will always win the battle of attrition when it comes to that. So right. looking into this matchup, the first thing that we're going to have to identify is the fact that we want to make our opponent pay for his resources. Anything he places on board, it's a card from his hand. If he doesn't have hand, he cannot play the game. That is the primary modus operandi. Okay, so we're attacking into him. Right. And now Bears is going to take it. We need to be very conscious of how many cards he has in his hand. So now we're going to play Freezer. And that's going to allow us to rest this guy. And we're going to attack into it because we don't want him to add cards to his hand. So right. now he lost one card. He didn't take the life from it on his first turn. So he did that, replace it. And now he just lost that. Right. And that's actually very important because when you're looking at um, the, the situation, we'll be able to actually uh, start swinging at his battle cards should he, uh, should he summon battle cards. Right. And we don't want him to take those cards from uh, 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 his life as resource. So he's gonna go this is a very powerful card, actually. So pause if you it. guys see this card here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it real quick. Okay. This card here, Fuwa. We've been seeing this a lot in a lot of red decks. It's just a, 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 a 10K like and on curve, it's it, it, it minus um, 15K. It's actually pretty decent. For Barris. Um, so oh, he yeah. went in, he killed the one drop, which was okay, but it's not something that I would have personally invested in. Why but not? Because you put that card on board as a 5k attacker, we're gonna try and rest it, swing it, and kill into it. Right. Uh, and, and that's and, our goal. Yeah. Our goal is he he killed our Zarbon, but our I mean he killed our Frieza, but Frieza took away his investment to take life. So he already negged one for that, and now he has a, he's at four cards in hand. So now, if we can find a way to rest this Fua, then we're going to be good, which we can't right now, so, which is fine. Now, unfortunately, what he does is he combos the card. He probably anticipated that we were going to kill it, which is okay, but it's also an error because he starved for resources. He lost one card from his hand, right. and he did not take a life. Right. Now he's at five. He's going to charge and go to four. And in order for Bears to play the game well, it have to be at least five energy. So we know he's not drawing cards. Right. 30k crit. We don't care about the crit, guys. It's okay. We want to awaken. Whether we lose cards or not, those cards are going to come back in the form of swings that are not at lead and swings that are, and, and then cards like Ginyu, okay? Correct. So as you guys can see, he has three cards in his hand at this point, seven life. And um, I'm going to go ahead and summon this. My intentions are to awaken this turn. We do have the energy marker, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and hit him at this point. Right, and then we're going to go after the three drop and kill it because we just essentially took a card from his hand. If he did, if he decides to defend the three drop, then there's another card out of his hand, and we know for sure we're killing the guy this turn because we're awakening. Okay? So right now, our goal is to have him protected. 
But if he doesn't, that's fine because now that card that came on board still equates to a card lost from his hand. At this point, our Barris is at six life and we're gonna end our turn. Now, if he wants to awaken here in order to start drawing cards, he's gonna have to haphazardly play cards, place them on board, make them vulnerable and take life, which would be beautiful. Here's another error. He kills two cards when he, um, he kills one card and he doesn't do that. But now we're okay with defending this with a 10K and go ahead and killing it and he's giving us a card to attack, which means his bears is not gonna get cards into his hand. Which means the card quality is so dangerous for bears because now in order for him to reach that fifth energy, he's gonna likely have to get rid of a card that otherwise he would have probably wanted to play. And we're in the game because the second we start setting up Ginyu's, we're way ahead of our opponent. Right, 100%. So as you guys can see, he has three cards in his hand, six life. We're not pressed. We have four energy at this point, okay? And so we know we're swinging into battle card. And if he wants to protect that card, he has to give us an, uh, a card in hand. It's not going to happen. So at this point, we can start summoning uh, you one know, drops uh, and one the drops. Yep. And listen, if he has a Barris, that means he has to draw one card for his turn. Charge. Which will bring it back to three. Then he has to summon Barris and pitch one. So he will go to one card. We defend Barris and then uh, we swing into it next turn with our Frieza. With our leader it. first. We swing with our leader. Draw, draw, our draw. Then we swing into Frieza and kill it or lock it. So the reason why we played all of these one drops. To entice him. Correct. To entice him to summon his Barris so that he goes neg one. And our one drops already got value. So we don't really care too much. Right. But he goes into this uh, five drop Frieza. It's obviously going to kill the blocker. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But five this drop is futile. The, the futility, the game is, was over two turns ago. Um, and now the game is just actually resolving into what we anticipated it to be. Right now, the game is unlivable. We have Frieza. Um, we're going to be able to stall him one more turn. And I think we're going to be able to go out for the kill the next. So we take the two hits because it's inconsequential at this point. He just doesn't even have cards in order to even pressure us and on the other side he gives us not only a card to attack but also he gives us cards to see in order to continue to set our right. board yeah. now at this point we have an option between Frieza but we go ahead and do this because we play the blocker which allows us to block his lead swing so now we don't even have to play 5k's and it takes him some time now we want him to defend, right? This is beautiful because by causing him to defend, we now wane the rest of the cards from his hand and we're already winning in hand um, advantage, but we also have Ginyu's anyway. So the goal is to take out this five drop, I mean, to make him defend this five drop. That's our goal. We're, we're, if we wanted to kill the five drop, we would have dropped our freezer, locked it, and then threatened to kill it. But in this point, there's no need. And we're just gonna get rid of cards that we've got from our Ginyu and now he has no hand, which means he can't even embarrass us next turn. And at this point, the game is the game is so far over. You know, your opponent should be signing a match slip. Now, consequentially, the only error he made this game was probably comboing the Fua, which, you know, it's not horrible. Yeah. That's the only say, error. Swing your hair, he should have swung with the 35k, made me block. Right. Right, and then swung with the leader. That mm -hmm. way it was more value. But, right. um, yeah. There we go. At this and point, the game's over. Um, we're going to swing there first just to get our draw. Then we're going to swing with Cooler. And we are going to, wait, we should put a one drop down first. Well, we're going to draw one from Cooler first. Let me pull from Ginyu. Yeah, from Ginyu. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to drop the one drop. And we're gonna swing with Cooler, kill the one drop, his one drop, Whis, and then we're gonna be a 35k on par. He lost all cards on board, all cards in hand, and then we're gonna set up a five drop freezer and say, see you next turn. Right, we have two five drop freezers in hand at this point, so. And now we end our turn. We have a No need to swing into him at this point, because right. what we wanna do is we wanna be able to Blitz him on that kill turn, which is definitely next turn. He dead draws, can't draw any cards. He hasn't taken any life. Does and he gets rid of our Ginyu, and that's cute, but we don't care at this point. Yeah. We just block. We rest and kill. Mm -hmm. So it was one for one, and yeah. Unfortunately, the game is just over. Um, 
And then now we can, he has zero across his hand, so we can actually kill him very methodically. Uh, I guess the goal is to hit him to five, double strike to three, hit him to two, and then double strike for game. Uh -huh. So lead swing is going to hit him to five. At this point, he's not going to be able to guard this, even if it was a super combo. Mm-hmm. Right, because the super combo puts him at 35 up. Right. Now he goes to two. And now we swing. This is going to automatically threaten a super combo, even if it doesn't kill him. Combo to 10K to make yep. it a 40. And now we just go in for the game. Drop this. This should search us a 10K freezer. That's our goal. Yep. They pulled us a 10K freezer. So now that card for one energy was a 15K and the next energy. So we basically pulled 30K with, with two energy. And at this point, the game's just over. We just dump. Even if he had four super combos, he would... It would be game. And that's pretty much how you play that matchup, guys. Yeah. Um, we can show you some more, but that's pretty much how you play that right. matchup. Right. And so, um, ultimately... Uh, you know, that's generally the concept. Uh, we have some more matches that we'll show you. Right. But again, that's just generally the concept. You want to be able to re you star starve them for their resources, hit them um, when it's time to hit them, hit their battle cards, and let them top deck. Right. Um, you've already amassed so much so much resources that you, uh, you, you, you're, you you know, it doesn't really matter. The thing is, is that, so now you may ask yourself, like, what elements were present? Well, the numbers are actually not there. If you're playing good and Beerus is playing good, and you both see everything you need to see. The numbers are still not really there. Because the problem is, is that Barris doesn't draw cards. And Barris doesn't have everything that Barris can do in order to awaken. And he has to trade, right? Whereas we don't have to do that, right? Barris doesn't have a way to divert his attacks unless we attack. So Barris inevitably is going to awaken us. Now, we're saying, oh, we're afraid of crit. But crit is really not the issue because of the fact that we're able, he's not drawing cards, and we're able to replace those cards with cards like yeah, Genyu, etc. Immediately. So, but also... Once you awaken, you replace those cards. Yes, but also, not even only that. The problem is, is that for our opponent to put a card on board, that card was already replaced. Right. So, if we say we lose a card, but our opponent placed the card on board, and then he loses that, that card, when we're talking about card um, exchange ability, that card was already replaced. We lost the card, our opponent lost the card, but we swung and draw one. So right. technically, we're actually positive, we're net one versus our opponent, just because of the fact that he has to place cards on board. One thing to take note, every turn, we still go plus one. We may go neg one in life, but life is not, like, life is a resource, but it's not an intended resource. And the reason why I say that is because, so long as I have one life, I'm in the game. Right. So you can crit me for a life, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, they're generally getting one or two crits, but you are not getting cards to your hand to crit me life, but I still get to attack every turn and draw one. I'm still going plus one no matter what. Right. If you do happen to go plus one, it's at the cost of your life, but in this deck, we're attacking your battle cards. Right. So, so you rent minus one to place the battle card, only for it to die, um, we go plus one. And then the biggest issue here is that, again, the rules of engagement. The problem in this matchup solely for the red player is the fact that, again, they're unable, outside of stuff like Barris, to take away our investments where we can say, hey, rest your guy inconsequentially and then kill it. Right. So if we didn't have that layer of color identity where we're resting our opponent's cards, then those pluses that we have would not necessarily be there, or at least they wouldn't express themselves the way that we would want them to. But in this case, we do that. In order for our opponent to net to neg our cards, he has to play cards, making them vulnerable. Even if he chooses not to attack with those cards, those cards are vulnerable. But what's worse with them being vulnerable is the fact that those cards alone are are um are are pockets of um, inherent value for us because we get to turn our leader towards those cards. So we not only does he not draw, but you place the card to neg me. But my um, color expression allows me to rest that, and then I can go plus off of killing it. Right. So 
that's pretty much big how the game is played. Right. But there's so, a lot more that goes into it. Which we'll get into more videos. Yes. So stay tuned for the next videos, guys. Before you do anything, we want to ask you guys to hit that subscribe button, guys. Help us. We're trying to grow to 3,000 subscribers. Yep, we have so a giveaway at 3,000. Correct. So we want you guys to go ahead and subscribe if you are watching this video, guys. We also want you guys to hit like to spread this uh, uh, video all across YouTube so that other Dragon Ball players alike can have access and exposure this to this video this as we're data. doing our best to help everyone else grow as Dragon Ball Super players. Right. Also, um, you can check us out on Facebook forward slash The Hill Twins. We also have our Twitch at twitch.com forward slash The Hill Twins. Correct. And if you want to really pick our brains, guys, you can check us out at patreon.com forward slash The Hill Twins where we'll be posting videos like this and we actually have a plethora of them on yep. their way right now. Deep videos that will really yep. get you to where you need to for these reasons and seasons. Right. Also, um, if you want to do some testing with us, that's one of the biggest things that is allotted to our patrons is that we can create private um, videos. We can jump on a, a call and we will go through the motions and we will get you to where you need to be, guys. Right. Okay? Anyway, guys, thank you for supporting our content. Yes. And as always, stay, stay super. super.